At first, I was a very shy student, and I guess with all the teachers pushing me, I was able to bring out the zest in myself. So before, I used to like talk a lot. Like I used to talk back. I wasn't that like nice. I was kind of mean. I've changed um, because the first day I came here to summer school, they teach us character strength. When we started, right, in, in, in 1994, Mike and I uh, knew that we wanted character to be as important to the work we were doing as academics. We knew that there were these characteristics, these character strengths that led to uh, successful lives. So and then when I came here, I learned great optimism, all of the character strength, and then it really helped me to achieve my goals. It, it wasn't always the kids who did best in school who, who did best in life, right? That, that there was something else that also mattered. And now I just meet, um, met a lot of new people like my teachers, and they've just helped me change because now I help people a lot. As we got better at the academic side, we started saying, well, you know, what about on the character side? Is there actually a science out there uh, to this? And around that time, we, we became familiar with the work of Marty Seligman and Chris Peterson and Angela Duckworth. There are seven strengths that are highly predictive of life outcomes. And these are zest, grit, self-control, optimism, gratitude, social intelligence, and curiosity. There was a science around these strengths uh, that actually led to these outcomes in life some of which actually outpredicted IQ or equally predicted life outcomes with IQ. And so if these strengths were highly predictive of life outcomes, well, why not make our schools focus on them? So here, to hear the strength, zest. Zest is basically energy and enthusiasm. Uh, and it's what you think of about that kid in your class who just is showing enthusiasm, actively participates. But here's, the, here's really the, 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 the nugget, the nugget of zest is this idea that you actually invigorate others. So that real energy and enthusiasm is not just self-contained, but it is something that also brings out energy and enthusiasm of others. One thing that I think I need to improve on is my self-control because I'm really zesty. So you know how there's some times where you can be zesty and then some times where you have to be serious? I think I haven't fully like, known when those times are, so I have to work on that. And when you think about self-control, there are basically actually two independent aspects of self-control. And, and the fascinating thing is that they're not necessarily linked. So there's work-related self-control and there's interpersonal self-control. And so the, the work-related self-control are, 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 are all of those things that go into actual being productive at work. I would just say it took a lot of self-control in high school and grit to keep going. Like, I had to consistently remind myself, where do I want to go? What do I want to be? The interpersonal side of self-control uh, is, is around uh, being able to be criticized, being able to, to accept criticism, uh, to not lose your temper, to, to be able to stay focused through distractions, uh, is polite to others, right? So it's really the, the irony of self-control, you could think about like self-control at its root, is work hard, be nice. Grit is a combination basically of persistence and resilience. Grit is like when I experience failure and keep on trying or when I finish something, I begin. Very important in college because um, I mean, I'm not always gonna like win a lot, so because in life nobody's perfect, so I'm just gonna let, say myself that um, at least I'm showing grit and optimism, all the character strengths. Optimism, it's, it's getting over frustrations and setbacks easily. Uh, and part of the reason you're able to get over it is the second thing, which is believing that effort can change your, your future. We have to talk a lot about optimism. And I know it looks bad now, but you have to stick with it. And, and practice is going to get you there. We all experience setbacks, right? So the optimistic child or the optimistic adults is that, is that child or person who resists the three Ps, who doesn't view it as personal, who doesn't view it as permanent, and who doesn't believe it is pervasive to their entire lives. So curiosity is that excitement to explore new things. I say that I was born with curiosity because I'm always curious about stuff. 
it's uh, the kid in kindergarten who just wants every opportunity to, to explore the hula hoop or the dig in the sand. Gratitude, it, it's being thankful. It's recognizing and being thankful for the opportunities you have and then being able to articulate it. Because right? those are actually two different skills, right? It's one thing to actually feel gratitude. It's another thing to actually uh, articulate that. Social intelligence, it's knowing how to include others. It's being able to respect the feelings of others. Uh, and then it's being able to resolve conflicts when they, they, they come up. It is one of the essential sort of life attributes. And it's, it's that kid who in the cafeteria tells the other kid, hey, come sit with us. When people feel bad, I like to like, you know, help them, like, ask them what's wrong and then try to, you know, settle the differences like between other people. So they all have these character strengths and all we do is just kind of help them bring it out more. We can talk about words and different ideas and character traits, but once you have one concrete language that everyone is using, teachers, parents, students, that they see it on the walls, their teachers are using it every day in class, that makes it a lot more salient for them, I think. I think a framework for character has changed the way I can interact with my students because instead of it being I have a feeling about what you're doing, it's I have this behavior that you're doing which highlights this particular strength. And so it takes a lot of the personal out of it so it's no longer Miss Harper doesn't like me or Miss Harper is unfair to me. And because of that, they're more open to being able to address it because it's not that I'm going to like you better, it's that you're going to be better if you do that. And my fear was how do, at the beginning was how do I instill character and teach without sacrificing time? Is it a lesson? Is it like activities? And I realized it's just conversation. It's just making it a part of everyday life. Otherwise, they're isolating it as my character class. All right, direct address mid-sentence. Uh, Omar, call somebody else who wants to zestfully perform this. Who's being optimistic today and knows that they can get the answer. So it's simple things like that. Another way of thinking about it is the creation of dual purpose, intentional dual purpose activities in the classroom. You're already teaching whatever it is you're teaching. So is there a way that one of these is highlighted in that content? If you're reading a novel and you see characters working together, what can you just T turn one of those questions instead of a what happened question into how does this relate to our understanding of character. There are small ways without changing everything to start incorporating it right now. The character report card has mainly impacted the conversations that I have with parents at report card night. It allows that conversation to be much more uh, effective, more information more action steps that I believe help kids think, okay, I can make this better. When I got it too, I was like, a character report card? Character is so much ingrained in the school that you are actually given the progress report on a character. And I think this is good for parents to be able to read it and help their children to work on where they're falling short. It's the best way I have seen in almost 20 years in education to explain a lot of things about kids and how they grow and explain to parents things that are turning their kids into superstars and to explain to parents areas in which their kids are struggling. It was amazing because when I looked through it, I realized it was my child. The first time in fifth grade when I got it, I was kind of sad because I thought I would get like, everything good. But then as I kept getting it throughout the quarters, I felt like I knew that I had to start taking action. And so I started like, you know, taking actions and doing things to improve it. So our entire character approach uh, is based on this quote from James Baldwin. And, and, the, and the quote has two parts. Uh, the first part says, the children are always ours, every single one of them. And the second part goes like this, children have never been very good at listening to their elders, but have never failed to imitate them. So if we're going to ask kids to work on zest and grit and self-control and optimism, gratitude, social intelligence and curiosity, if we're going to ask kids to work on those things, then we have to work on those things as well. Because the beauty of character is this idea that it's a shared journey, right? Because we all 
are working on our character at all points in time because they're actually character strengths where kids are stronger than adults generally. So it was, I uh, met him in 1998. I was principal of uh, Kip Academy in the Bronx. I was having this conversation with an eighth grader, uh, a very zesty conversation with this eighth grader. In other words, I was sort of yelling at this eighth grader because they were yelling at another kid. And you know, I was, you know, it was unfortunate. You know, my voice was raised and, and, uh, and so then the kid in the middle, as only an eighth grader will do, say, you know, Mr. Levin, you, you do realize you're yelling at me to stop yelling. And, and was able to say, exactly, we should both stop yelling. Um, and it was in that moment uh, that my, my, my practice of yelling radically changed. And I realized that if I was going to ask kids to, to do something or not do something, then I had to be willing to commit to this shared journey. Well, when I grow up, I want to be like a person that doesn't back down, that has a lot of hope and integrity. I see how these things are impacting them. I see how they're thinking more about self-control and zest. I'm seeing how they're connecting the, 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 the character strengths to their future lives. It's clarified the oneness of our mission. It's clarified that we are all in this together. It's clarified that we are asking of kids and parents the same thing that we're asking of ourselves. And it's given us a unifying language around that. The more we arm them with not just what it means to be a smart, well-educated person, but it means to be a person with strong character and strong values, I think we set them up for success. It doesn't matter how smart you think you are or what you believe intelligence to be, whether you have it or you don't have it. What really ends up counting in life is how hard you work and the choices that you make. So that's what I want them to get out of this the most.